what's up, what's up, leaders. So yesterday, I quit my job. And that was kind of a crazy thing because I quit a job of a career in higher education where I've spent over six years putting, in, putting myself in a good spot, putting myself in a really good spot. And I walked away from it. And I want to tell you a little story of why. See, I started my career in higher education a little bit differently than most. I, I was a student at a junior college. I was a student athlete. I was playing football there. And I saw that, I saw the end of my football career come and I tried to look for that next thing. See, what I loved most about football and sports was the ability to like figure out how to operate at the highest level possible. And when I saw my career for athletics like come to an end, I said, well, shoot, like what's gonna be next? And I, I realized like, well, to be whatever good professional, because I did not know what I wanted to do for a career, then I knew I needed to just be a good leader. I saw enough success of leadership skills helping me in athletics that I knew that that was gonna help me in the other, other side of things too. So I jumped in as a student leader. So here's what happened. I went from playing football, college athlete, check this out. So I went from playing football to being a student leader. What we called, what we were called, were resident assistants. Now, these are the people that when you get to college and you live on campus, they're the people that are busting all the parties and throwing down when people are doing stupid things. Uh, not the most glamorous job. So I was a resident assistant for one semester. I had never been a resident assistant before. I, well, I didn't even live on campus before that. Uh, so I was a resident assistant for one semester. Um, it was a position that like I didn't look at as like hard to get, but apparently it was. Like, so I was a resident assistant for one semester. And then after that, so like during the winter break, they created a new position called a resident director. And what that position was, is it was gonna supervise a team of resident assistants. So all of a sudden, there was gonna be a resident director that was over like the entire building. Like resident assistants were just over like one hallway. Like if you had the building in a little window, here's your RA, your resident assistant, that is just in charge of that one like floor or hallway, depending on how big the building was. But now they were creating this new position where it was one person over the entire building supervising these individual resident assistants and their floors, okay? You follow? Now, that was a position that everyone looked at as saying like, oh, those people over there that had been resident assistants for a couple of years, those are the people that are gonna get that job. And I was like, well, why not me? You know, I yearned for leadership. I wanted it. I wanted a type of position. So I applied. Guess what? I got it. And so then I was a resident director for that spring semester. By then I graduated from that junior college. So I was going to be all done with my diploma. Here you go. Diploma. One of them. It was the little one over there. My associate's degree. And so then I took that and said, okay, I, you know, off I go for the summer. By that point, I had gotten married and my wife still had another semester left just at that junior college to finish her associate's degree. And so we were gonna stick around. I was gonna start a online, I was gonna keep working on my bachelor's degree online through Utah State University. And we were going to uh, just hang out there for another, another year. And so that summer I was hunting for jobs. Now, during that time, this same department at the junior college, a window reflecting right there, this same department created a brand new full-time position. And I'll just write RLC. It was called a Residence Life Coordinator for Leadership Development and Training. What this position was going to be is in charge of the recruiting, hiring, and training of all the resident directors and all the resident assistants. That was like a total team of like 25 at the time. And this was a full-time position that was meant for doing leadership training. And I was like, that seems really cool. Like I still didn't know exactly what I wanted to do for my career. I still didn't know like, like what direction I wanted to go, but I knew leadership had a big part of it and I just wanted to be good at that. And so I, at first at the start of the summer, there was a qualification on the job listing that said, you know, bachelor's degree required, associate's degree preferred. 
And I was like, you know what? That sucks. I wish I was, you know, further out in in my path. So I didn't apply because, you know, it was it was one of those like I would have gotten written off just bought by on paper because I didn't meet the qualifications or whatever. And so I didn't apply. But then a couple of months went by and I noticed that that position was still available and it was different. Now it didn't say bachelor's degree required. It said associate's degree required, which is not super typical in higher education. Um, this said bachelor's degree preferred. And so I said, well, like there it is. Like if that's not a clear sign, then I don't know what will be. So my wife and I decided to apply. I got that job. That's a story that I can go into an, another time, but, but that started an incredible career for me of being able to go. There were some hard parts about that that I can tell, tell you later of going very quickly from resident assistant to supervising resident assistants, like my peers, there were coworkers. All of a sudden I went from teammate to supervisor. And then even more so than that, all of a sudden I was a full-time guy running the show. And that presented its own problems, all that kind of stuff. There's their own, its own challenges, but also gave some incredible opportunities. Now, here's the point. I was so invested in creating leadership development training for my, um, for my student leaders. And so what I wanted to do so bad was provide leadership training um, for them because I looked at that that was a big part of my job. That's what I wanted to do. And so I tried to do it as much as I could. The problem was that I was spending way more time than I needed to. Here, let me show you. The problem was, was that I was spending in my circle of time, you know, I had a bunch of different roles. One of those was to provide the leadership development and training, but that kind of only um, took up like maybe 25% of my time. Because the other time, the other parts of the time, I had to deal with, I'll just write it this way, I'm gonna write drama. I had to deal with all the roommate stuff. Again, this was on campus housing, and so anytime any of the students some serious type of things to like, hey, he, used, he keeps using my toothpaste, I had to deal with all that stuff. I had to deal with just like all the events that we tried to do. Um, we tried to put on a lot of cool activities in the residence hall so that students had something to do, free food every once in a while, a chance to meet people, all of that kind of stuff. We threw some really cool events. But still, and then there was, oh, oh, there's so much paperwork. So much paperwork, I'll put administrative and parents. I've got some funny stories for you for another time. But the main thing that I saw part of the job that should have been my whole circle was only a quarter. And so I said, you know what? There's gotta be something out there. There's got to be, there's gotta be a resource. There's gotta be a blog. There's gotta be a YouTube channel that I can refer my students to just to send like an email, an email out to my team once a month and say like, Hey, here's two blog posts and a YouTube video that you should watch sometime this month. It's going to help you be better at personal organization. It's going to help you with conflict management. It's going to help you. So it, it was, it, here it is just for you. Take it and off you go. And I couldn't find anything. And so that was the sign for me that, you know what, this is a real need. I could find the general leadership stuff. I could find the big guys, the Tony Robbins and all that kind of stuff, but I could not find anything that was meant for students that was to help leadership students. And so I said, you know what, I'm gonna start creating this myself. I'm gonna challenge the process as much as I can to incorporate more leadership training for students. And so that's what I did. I pushed hard in that first job. I was there for four or five years and then um, got to a point where I had built it as much as the school would let me. So I went somewhere else. I went to a different university that again, same thing. There was so much opportunity for more leadership training and all that good stuff, but so many other aspects of my job kept pulling me away from that. Meanwhile, building everything that's next your limits, building it all, building the YouTube channel, the podcast, the Instagram page, the blog, all of that kind of stuff. And that led to some incredible opportunities that now have made it possible for me to do this full time, to do only the student leadership training, to create training, to network and, and help foster the relationships with state students, student leaders all over the country, to help produce content that will happen at conferences all over the country for students to be able to experience the best leadership training that they should be able to have. And that's what I get to do now. And so, yes, I did quit my job from higher education, but it's for something that I have been building up to for the last 
seven years. And I couldn't be more pumped. And so I'm excited for you to join in. I'm excited for you to be along for the ride. I'm excited for you to watch my results. And I'm excited to nix limits with you. And so tag along. It's going to be a good time. Yeah.